Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon. So this board was announced at CES 2016 and it hit the market last month and it bears a similar feature set really to the current Gaming Pro except this board supports a carbon fibre livery with all of the major ports, the lanes and the heat sinks bearing an all black design for those wanting to construct a super stealthy config. Those with an affection towards matte black will gravitate towards this board as it is pretty much the epitome of sleek. And although this board is designed to be cost effective, MSI has kitted Carbon out with such features as Steel Armor PCI Express to prevent interference and bolster heavy graphics cards. Now Carbon is available to buy now, it's £127 in the UK, $170 if you are over in the States. So quite an affordable board to go with, it does have a few features missing which you would find on those higher end uh, type of offerings as we are going to find out but irrespective of this we're still getting some excellent tools and options included so let's begin okay we're going to kick things off by having a look at the packaging and going inside to see what you get included so here is the box for carbon as you can see it is all about those rgb leds We've got a picture there of a supercar with that lighting and uh, this board is of course from the performance gaming line if we just flip this box over you can see here we've got a full listing of all those features now uh, these features are kind of integral to the gaming uh, series of msi boards uh, the only exception being that mystic light is kind of uh, really tailored to the carbon series, uh, to the carbon boards. Uh, so those features are military class 5, audio boost 3. We're going to have a look at those as we go into the video guys, so we're not going to go through those now. Uh, but we've got a picture of the board there, we've got a full technical specification, and then we've got to look also at all those ports on the rear I.O. section. Okay, inside the box we'd usually get some cardboard just to give the uh, board a bit more uh, protection as obviously it kind of rattles around a bit now without that cardboard. Uh, unfortunately the previous reviewer did get a bit hungry and decided to eat it. Let's move that out of the way. Inside here we get uh, quite a number of different accessories. First of all we've got that user guide there. That is of course going to be uh, useful if you do get into any problems. It's got all that detail in there of how to install things and uh, various connectors and things like that, a bit more detail. We've also got a driver CD with the utilities. We've got uh, this leaflet here kind of encouraging you to register your board. We've got the rear I.O. shield which is cushioned. We've got two SATA free cables and we've got that flexible SLI bridge. Okay, so here is our Gaming Pro Carbon. So this board does indeed follow after its name with that carbon aesthetic and pretty much everything that you can see bar a few components are black. The PCB is matte black, the heat sinks, the ports, the lanes and even the capacitors are black too. So for those wanting to create a, a stealthy yet aggressive design, this theme should be ideal. And of course, since there are no distinguishing colours, you're pretty much free to create your own arrangement with an all black configuration or add in a splash of colour. One thing that is a strange omission is the lack of that rear I.O. cover. Uh, with Z170 we saw the introduction of these rear I.O. parts and really to maintain a consistent design it would have been better for MSI to conceal those silver units at the back. We're now going to move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board. So let's start at the CPU socket. So of course, being an LGA1151 board, we have this support there for Intel's 6th generation of Skylake CPUs. So you can use any chip from this family, but with a board of this caliber, most users are probably going to go for the 6600K or the 6700K. And incidentally, if you do have a cooler, which is designed for 1150 or 1155, then that cooler is going to fit on this board as the diameter is exactly the same. So no need to go out and buy a new cooler if you already have one. Now Carbon comes with an eight phase power design, which is digital. And uh, throughout we also have the Miller 2 Cast 5 components, which include titanium chokes, which offer up to 30% better efficiency over standard chokes, dark caps, which give you 10 year lifespan, as well as things like humidity, high temperature, circuit ESD and EMI protection. And then covering those MOSFETs there we have a dual heatsink design. And those heatsinks there are not interconnected with any type of uh, copper heat pipe. Uh, but you can see there that MSI has given them that carbon treatment with that checkered pattern. And then just over towards the back there we have the 8 pin CPU power connector. And MSI has also included a dual fan header for the cooler which is handy. 
Moving on to the memory region, we of course have allocation for dual channel DDR4 and we have support there for up to 64 gig, up to 3600 megahertz and XMP 2.0 is available too. Now in a similar way to which we've seen with the audio being isolated for clean delivery, MSI's devised DDR4 boost, which separates the circuitry for better performance and less interference. You can see there the white lines stretching to and from that memory and the socket. Now around the memory we'd usually have LED debug, but MSI are using a streamlined version on this board which uses just LEDs. You can see there, right next to the 24 pin power, we have those LEDs, and those help you to identify any problems during post. Now you'll notice the edge of the board is somewhat different to the usual arrangement because everything is set further in, and there is a border. Here you can see how different the carbon is compared to the gaming M7. On the M7 there, the 24 pin power and the other components are all sitting on the edge of the board. Well, the reason carbon is designed in this way is because we have a series of RGB LEDs which sit on that outer edge. So with MSI's gaming app, we can modify the colors on that outer edge and even apply different effects such as gradients, breathing, and music mode. Now this might interfere with the consistency of that stealthy theme of carbon, but this is quite a fun thing to have and you can always switch it off. And as we move along, we have dual USB 3 headers, which is really good to see as most boards generally come with just a single port. And then we have the storage, which consists of four SATA 36G ports. And then just behind that, we have a strip of SATA Express. Uh, so with the SATA Express, as always, you can use those two spur SATA ports for things like SSDs if you aren't using an Express device. Now around those ports we also have that large heatsink which covers the driving force behind this board, the Intel Z170 chip. It might just be a small point to make, but uh, the styling on that heatsink really highlights just how well MSI designed these boards and maintain that consistency throughout. Now with the PCI Express there is a lot going on, so in this region we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s and four PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 8, and four. So if you're planning to use multiple graphics cards, the overall mode will drop to the lowest that you're using, and NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire are fully supported for those multi-GPU configurations. So guys, if you are just using the one card, then that top one is the best to use. Now with this being an Intel Z170 board, we have the NVMe support. So to the side of that upper X1, we have a single M.2 slot, and that provides us with the bandwidth of up to 32 gig. The only downside is if you do use that slot, it knocks out SATA ports five and six. But we are pleased to see that when we do install a graphics card, that card does not engulf that drive, as it's essential to get as much airflow over those M.2 drives to keep the temperatures down. So that placement there is ideal. So immediately next to the PCI Express, we of course have the audio components, which all combine to form Audio Boost 3. So this gives us isolated area there for the audio components, metal EMI shielding, the Hemic Audio Enhancer, dual OPA 1652 amps, Nippon Chemicon capacitors, and gold-plated audio jacks. And all of that translates to a decent audio solution. Uh, onboard audio has you know, really come a long way in recent years, and this just clearly highlights this fact with so much focus on quality. Okay, and lastly we arrive at the rear I.O. section of Carbon, and this gives us the following functionality. We've got the PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, two USB 2 ports, DVI for onboard video out, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A and Type C ports, another two USB 2 ports with the HDMI out, Gigabit LAN there, and that is via the Intel i219 controller, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and then those gold plated audio jacks with optical functionality. So, a fair amount of things going on there, quite a lot of features, although we would have preferred to have less emphasis really on the USB 2 and more on USB 3. After all, USB 3 is backwards compatible anyway. Okay, so that concludes our look at the Gaming Pro Carbon. So as we've seen, MSI has done a great job on the styling of this board. You, know, you may think it is a quite an easy route to take by coating everything in black, but curse still needs to be taken, as I mentioned earlier, with things like the heat sinks, which have been really well crafted, and the finish on those is great. And even if you perhaps did want to add in a splash of colour, you can do with different components by adding those in, but also with the RGB lighting, and the great thing is you aren't locked down to a specific colour. You can uh, you know, modify the colours and the effects too. And that is quite a useful thing to have when you think about it if you uh, later on down the line perhaps alter the theme of your PC. Now Carbon does have a few things absent from its feature set, uh, but generally we're talking about things like you know, your onboard power and reset buttons, uh, dual BIOS switch, and to be honest with you, uh, quite a lot of people probably won't lose sleep over those. Um, but on the plus side, we do have some great things included 
We've got the twin USB free headers, which actually aren't very common to see on boards nowadays. Uh, we've also got the M.2 and we've got the armor plated uh, PCI Express. So, you know, all things considered against the price, this is a great board to pick up. So guys, as always, the full review is going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. Over there, all the benchmarks and the best overclock that we could achieve with Carbon. And the current milestone, by the way, is 4.8 with the 6700K. So hopefully this board can rise to the challenge. So I really hope you enjoyed this week's video, guys. If you did, then please hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then please do so, so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next Friday.